49ers are getting some good reinforcements. Not one player, not two player, three players, and Chase Young if you want to put them into that realm. So uh, let's talk about the three players that the 49ers have activated their practice windows off of IR and PUP. Let's take it away, Wayne. Let, let's talk about these three cats and kind of how you feel about them. Yeah. Walk well, us I mean, through these guys. Let's go through Let's go through Samuel Womack, right? Fifth former fifth round pick for the 49ers. Fifth round? Sixth round? One of them. Either way, he goes back a couple years back, comes in his rookie year, looks like he can be something dominating. The one thing we learned about Samuel Womack, the third, I want to make sure I say their names properly, is the simple fact that this guy has been glued to re receiver, right? He's been like a glue to the receiver. And not only has he been stuck on the receiver, I think one of the things you get from him is he just has a knack for the football, right? He knows how to punch it out, tip it out, and get the ball. Uh, and so he creates turnovers. It's going to be interesting to see with him coming back where they choose to utilize him. John, I don't know about you. I'm a huge fan of Samuel Womack, especially on the outside. I felt like that's where he played very well in Toledo. I know it's hard to work your way up the depth chart on the outside. They tried him in the slot with San Francisco his rookie season. He kind of got used a little bit, like abused a little bit or whatever. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what happens throughout these practices. Let's see if he he's even ready to go uh, this upcoming week. But I'm really great and glad to have Samuel Womack back. But let's talk about the fifth round pick this year and Darrell Luter Jr., who is not going to let you get a reception on him. Another outside guy from South Alabama, right? Love the kid. He has a knack for football. Like, the Niners are getting these young football players back, right? They may struggle in scheme. And I just think if they go out there and they play a certain role, I think they're going to be just fine. So you get another cornerback out there. And I will explain to you why I keep slating those guys to the outside. And then you get back an edge rusher from Georgia. His name is Robert <laughs> Bill Jr., defensive end. You want to know why they drafted this kid in the fifth round? Because of speed. Speed, the need, it kills. And listen, I kept saying we need a speed option out there on the outside. I like what they got in Chase Young. They got a premier pass rusher trading for Chase Young. So now you got two of those guys, him and Nick Bosa. You got a bunch of serviceable guys. And now you got a, a, a one-trick pony, in my opinion, when it comes to speed. You get him out there. You could run certain packages. He'll have one job and one job only. It'll be third and longs. Go get me the quarterback. I think, I, and I like them. I like all three. None of them have substantial amounts of time other than Samuel Womack for his playing time in the NFL. He's the most experienced of the three. But you're getting three guys back that can possibly be a bonus for the San Francisco 49ers, especially on the defense. Yeah, yeah I like that. And the, and the poll question to today's show is who are you most excited about or who's the most important coming back for the 49ers? Robert Bill Jr., Samuel Womack, Daryl Luter, talking about just the guys coming off IR or PUP. 80, uh, Samuel Womack's in at 82%. That, that's the one. Daryl Luter Jr., second with 12, and Robert Bill Jr. pulling up, you know, kind of last place with 6%. But I don't know. So, Wayne, you know, let, let's put this to you. Of it. these three... Oh, yeah. Who are you? Who's the most important to the 49ers this year? It's got to be Womack, right? Because he's actually have he has the experience. He's played. He un, like he's been in a defensive system already. He's not a guy you got to kind of work up. Now, the question is, where will Wilkes use him? The reason why I'm happy with Luter and Womack is the simple fact that these are going to be Wilkes guys. As long as Wilkes is the defensive coordinator of the 49ers, this is where he specializes. This is how he, this is who he breeds. He breeds defensive backs. All right. Now, look, I feel like Womack is the guy. I personally, I don't know how you feel about this. You're the guru. I, this is the scenario that I would, I would present to you if I'm, you know, you're the defensive coordinator and I'm going to say, hey, you know, how about you put Womack on the outside, move your best cornerback to the slot, because look at the teams that we're playing. They're going to put their best wide receiver in the slot. And at the end of the day, I trust D'Amador Lenore covering guys in the slot than I do anybody else on this team. Then you can always use Isaiah Oliver. I know that's your guy. You can oh, it, not you, but I know that's right. your guy. You can always utilize him if they kind of put Ingram in the slot. That's a good matchup. Yeah, it's. 
I, I, I agree with you on Womack, and, you know, that's the m- most votes for sure. Special teams is so damn important. Huge. He immediately uh, – he was my special teams player of the year last year. I, I know Ooh. everybody talked DFF and Odom, but, you know, we break down every snap over on the 49ersrush.com. It was Samuel Womack. Like, that was just what it was. So – him coming back just shores up all special teams and just removes more questions with how can the 49ers let games get away. Womack mm-hmm. kind of protects that. Now, defensively, I don't like Womack. The 49ers don't like Womack in the slot. Jimmy Ward let that slip in his Richard would not even let it slip. Ward just said they told me they don't want Womack playing in the slot because he's not physical enough and they don't like that, which is weird because he's so physical on special teams, but Nickel's a weird spot. It's a weird spot. I don't expect him. And Wayne, I want to I want to ask you this. I think the three starting cornerbacks for this week against Jacksonville are going to be the same three. Agreed. I don't expect Womack to go out there and take the nickel or the outside job and kick Demo in right off the bat. It, like I, I agreed, but if we're talking adjustment, like like you know, and I'm not gonna say like let, let's say that you're right. Let's say I, I agree with you 100%. I, Oliver starts at the nickel. I mean, and then you got your two outside guys who are very good. They've been very good all season long, right? I agree. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the question is, let's look at Jacksonville. I know this is not that show. Let's look at the three wideouts. Let's look at yeah. Zay Jones. Let's look at Christian Kirk. Let's look at um, hey, uh, Evan Ingram. Which is the tight end wide out, and then let's, and then their main, their main, their number one. Who I always forget his freaking name. Um, Zay Jones. They got not Zay. Uh, their I'll, number I'll, one from Atlanta. Hey. Oh, hey, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. Right. That's their one. Right. So look, I guarantee you, they're going to match up. They're going to put Christian Kirk in the slot. They'll leave Zay on the outside. They'll leave and they'll live with what they get on the outside. I feel like Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk will be interchangeable. I like the matchup. I like Isaiah Oliver's size on a slower receiver. And Ingram, not saying he's slow. He's just slower than the other receivers. So situational football, this will be a great time to test our defensive coordinator. You got to find a way to get Womack some reps, though, in the game. Like, the kid has a knack for football. And outside is where he shines. And he typically forces turnovers. You got to find a way to get him in there. doesn't have to be a lot of reps. Just get him some reps. But, John, I agree with you. We go with the same three we've been rocking out with. Why? Because you just added Chase Young. That's kind of the way it goes. So, now, I want to I talk about Bill and Luter because I'm not sure they're going to be activated this week. Maybe not even next week, and they might not even be activated at all. However, right. their ceiling – is way higher than so many other players on this roster. And the 49ers have always chosen to redshirt rookies, at least once we got competitive, which we are now. But, man, I just struggle if Robert Bill Jr. is healthy and can just do five speed rushes a game and be on special teams. Don't you think that's more valuable than what Drake Jackson's bringing so far? Yeah, because I mean, like, and and you you ask yourself, all right, what is Drake Jackson's value and his role now that we've added and beefed up and gotten better in the in the rush four, which is what I'm going to start calling him, right? And so then when you do that, like, where does Drake Jackson roll? Now, Bill has to have really good practices, but he does have a he has a unique set of skills, and he has speed. So do you take Liam speed? Neeson, baby. Yes. Do you do you do you value speed over athleticism yes. or bend or or whatever, right? And yeah, like you should. Will our defensive coordinator do that though? That's the yeah. that's the question. Because he kind of he's kind of like Kyle Shanahan is to he like to the offense, like he's kind of loyal to his guys. Now, I'm telling you, if this kid Bill is practicing well, he's healthy. And he is catching the attention of these these coaches. You have to find a way to utilize him and get him on this active roster because he could be a play. He could be a difference maker. The 49ers Rush Podcast.